So, my stay in Belgium. So this photo is right before I left Belgium, and this is um, one of the inbound outbound meetings with one of the students who were staying in Arizona currently. Um, there is when we ask them questions like what to expect about our exchange and stuff, and um, they can tell us all they want, but um, nothing ever was realized until we actually experienced for ourselves. This next one is um, the first time I received a message from my host sister Athena, who actually left to Canada as I was taking her place with her family, um, and I remember freaking out when I saw that, she, you know, the little screenshot or preview of my family will be here first. Um, host family and she sent me a photo and um, I was just delighted and immediately started contacting them and talking to them. So it was on um, August 25th of 2013 that I left for Belgium and um, I had a nice meal. It was like a ten and, hour, ten and a half hour flight with the uh, layover in um, London. So that was cool. Um, so these are my first. The Troll was the first Belgian beer that I had with my host family which is a little odd because I wasn't used to kind of drinking in public. Um, obviously, it's not legal in the States, um, but it was my first chocolate and my first um, waffle. It's also the time my addiction started because I did not stop eating until I got in Belgium. My first burger. Um, I had the first time I went to Brussels, I met all the exchange students. We were over 200, um, 200 or 300 from all over the world, just with Rotary alone. Uh, the first time we met shortly after I arrived, it was like two or three days after I arrived in Belgium. Um, we met up with some exchange students and we all went to Lille, France, and visited the city. None of us spoke French, we just kind of, I don't know, we just explored. We took a map and we circled things and we decided to go see it. So this is the first time we got lost. We were coming back from um, hanging out on Wednesday and we all went meet up with, uh, at Brussels for a bar. And we ended up getting on the wrong train, because mind you, it's in a different language we don't know. And we ended up going to some place out on the Flanders side, so we don't speak Dutch. Um, and I had to ask like this lady on the train to like let me use her phone and tell my host mom like where I was at, and she had to come pick me up. It was like, kind of like, a little hassle, but it happens when you don't speak the language. <laughs> um, so these are my trips. Um, I was able to visit Paris with um, my host fam or my friend and her host family. There we saw the Eiffel Tower, the Sacred Heart, um, just various things. We went to Amsterdam. I got to see the House of Anne Frank. Uh, the Van Gogh Museum, the Rembrandt Museum. Um, we went like to walk through the city, saw the red light district, um, all while staying overnight in uh, this ancient castle. Uh, so I realized my one of my biggest dreams was to go to Italy and see the Sistine Chapel, um, to see it, touch it, smell it, everything was just crazy. Um, I went to the Trevi Fountain, which was always a dream to see, and the Colosseum, especially with all the history um, that goes on there. Um, also many things like the Statue of David, which was also very important for me to see. Um, it's really hard to get snapping the photo of that just because there were faux Nazis there. Um, but I went to also a lot of um, museums like the, the National Cinema Museum and um, other things like the Oriental Art Museum um, and the Real, Vienna Real Castle or Plaza or something like that. I also went to um, Munich. We were taking a bus from Belgium to Croatia and we stopped at Munich for some nights. And um, there we drank beer. What else do we do when you're in Germany? <laughs> um, and Croatia was a really amazing experience too. There we went water rafting. Um, we rode through the the kind of the beach portion of it um, on beach cruisers. Um, we visited one of the most beautiful uh, waterfalls in the, in the country there. Um, we also discovered caves and walked through the city. Um, when clubbing with our teachers, that was really fun too, not for life. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. And there's and everything was so cheap because they had the kunas there. Um, so we just, oh, we had a blast. Um, and this is just some general stuff in Belgium. It was when I went to the, it's called the Belfry. Um, it was kind of like a watchtower during the, I guess like during the war. One of them was in Tournay where one of my friends lived. Um, so we visited there often. Um, we did things like kayaking, um, neon splash. This is like, a paint party. Basically, they just DJ music and splash paint. And um, we also did a lot of carnivals. Belgium is really rich in um, celebrating you know their history, and so there you, you dress up and you meet the exchange students and you drink and you have fun. Um, also, the carnival for the seniors. You dress up one day in the school. I dressed up like a Belgian, um, and then all of us on the way to Croatia. There's another photo there from um, Austria. Um, on my birthday, I went out to dinner with my host family. It's my uh, host dad, Pino, who's like the greatest man I've ever met. Um, celebrated New Year's in um, the Brussels Plaza, which is amazing because right around the like the time struck, everyone started kissing everybody. It was just like, oh my gosh! And the men are going crazy trying to like snatch you, and you're just like, did you kiss anyone? No, I was almost I was attacked. <laughs> <laughs> no, not the plaza. No. 
<laughs> but it was really fun. Um, and it's just like messing around in class on the last days. They always worked so hard while I slept or copied dictionaries and things like that. So this is just kind of a brief, um, some moments that were special moments, sad, happy, and kind of funny. Um, this t-shirt kind of like is the epitome of an exchange student. So, it's, so that moment when you start to think in the, uh, two languages at the same time, and it's really just kind of a, like a mind explosion because you just don't know what's happening. You don't know if you're like, you're Belgian or American or Venezuelan or whatever it'd be, and it's kind of crazy. So with all that craziness, sometimes comes where you need the moment of peace, and what I would do is I'd go through the woods that was near my house, and I'd bike through the little lake, um, and I'd sit there and listen to music and just kind of have my own time. Um, that way I can, you know, continue forward. Remember, I was so excited when I got my first package. My mom said peanut butter and Mexican candy and all this <laughs> stuff that they just don't have. Like, yeah, mind you, they have great chocolates, but there's nothing like, oh, that peanut butter and red devil sauce. So delicious. So, so delicious. Um, the struggle was also real keeping up with my best friends. I had two of them who, um, one went to Brazil and one went to Taiwan and then one stayed in the States. So there was, in total, um, maybe a nine hour difference between all of us. Um, so it was very hard to kind of always keep in contact. Um, there's a lot of Skype dates that I went through. One of the things I um, was particularly special was, was sharing Thanksgiving with my host family. Um, we cooked for them. I one of the funny things was like we asked them like, do you know, do you have like creamed pumpkin pie or whatever? She's like, oh yeah, don't worry. She gives me a pumpkin, just a just a, <laughs> a full pumpkin. I'm like, how am I supposed to make pumpkin pie from this? Um, but we succeeded. It was definitely arduous, but it was good. The pumpkin pie was good, but the food was a little. You know, it's about the experience. It's a thought that counts, you know? Um, this was a really important day for me. One of my friends, Marina, was telling her how much I miss Mexican food. And, like, I just I just miss that. I don't know. I just love Mexican food. It's so good. And one day she was, like, having a sleepover. And she's like, want to watch scary movies and make tacos. And I was like, oh, she's just playing. Oh. No, but she was real. She went to, like, the little international store and bought, like, a hard shell taco with meat. And it was Maureen who did it. Oh. Um, and we had a taco night. And that was like, the first time all those girls had tried Mexican food. Mind you, it wasn't anything like actual Mexican food, <laughs> yeah. but it was so sweet that she uh, went out of her way to, to try to please that portion. Um, another thing was when I went and visited Brendong. Um, this over here photo says an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, and that was something one of the prisoners, or I guess, um, not prisoner, but one of the Jewish men had carved into the wall. There was also carvings of um, Christ, um, calendars, um, those were the real striped pajamas that someone had wore, um, and that was just a very, it was a, I mean, it was a breathtaking experience. You know, you. You don't really know what to say. It was very dark and very eerie, and um, once in a life experience for sure. Another great thing um, was when I did a strike for Venezuela. At that time period, Venezuela was going through the student strikes, and the government was attacking back with them um, with, with violence and stuff. And um, particularly, my uncle had wreaked some. Uh, well, he got shot. My uncle got shot in the arm and leg. Not the arm the calf and something. He got shot something and I was just so angry and particularly the Venezuelans they were having a protest. Um, so I had a lot of fun with that. Um, it felt great just being with my own people, people who spoke Spanish and supporting kind of my country, you know. Um, and then one of the greatest days of my life was my surprise birthday party. I was set to believe that I was going to be spending a miserable weekend with my host family and their family because I wasn't, they told me like we're not going to be able to celebrate your birthday because we're having a family dinner. I was like, ugh. Really? <laughs> it's my birthday though, like, you're gonna do me like that? Um, and it turns out it was a surprise birthday party, and that was super fun, the girls really let loose. Usually when we have parties, we're taking care of the boys because so they get drunk so quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but this is just all girls, and, well, we had a blast. So I was an in general, um, I don't have the words to explain um, how happy I was to have experienced and found the friends and families like that. Um, so marvelous like that. Um, but above all the photos and souvenirs um, and dreams that were realized, um, I'm mostly excited for um, the friendships and um, just those beautiful moments together. No regrets.